Right, morning guys. I've got a coffee this morning um, and no ginger nuts. So back again for part two um, of the mini power wall for the shed. I think that's what I called it. Um, it was just like a mini series which I'm, I'm doing where I basically put solar panels on this shed um, and attempting to run it off of, you know, run it as, run it as kind of renewable as possible. Um, the shed doesn't really take a lot of power so it should be possible. But go and check the first part out if you've not seen this one already and then it'll all make sense. Right, so where are we up to then? So I've, I've basically split up this e-bike pack, which was a 48 volt, 15 amp hour pack, um, into, it was actually made into like uh, 3P sections, so quite easy to kind of manipulate. So I managed to um, take that apart without any kind of explosions or anything. Um, I had a couple of sparks here and there where I was taking some of the, um, the, uh, the nickel strips off um, earlier on this morning. Um, but yeah, no, it's going well. So I'll show you what's going on. Right, so we've got one bank here. This is a 45 amp hour bank. Can you believe that? 45 amp hours. So this is only one cell, 3.7 volts um, and 9p. So these are 2650 cells, 26650 cells. So they're the bigger ones, not the 18650s that you see all the time. These are the bigger ones. And then we've got a bunch more over there as well. So this has been done. I've just joined these, some of these. I've started to do this using these little um, copper wires. These are probably rated for like, I don't know, 20 amps or something like that. So it should be all right across, across here. We're not gonna be pulling huge amounts of current. And obviously if something goes wrong, then um, that will probably just act as a, a rather large fuse. Um, so yeah, there you go, that's that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish these ones. These ones still need to be done. Um, I've got one left over, which might be uh, useful for something interesting. Maybe like another, maybe like another heater or something like that. Uh, anyway. So at the moment, the shed is actually being powered off grid. So we're running, this is the same setup I showed you the other day, just a nasty old lead acid battery, which is actually holding up quite well. This, this has been on all night. Um, we've only like a couple of amps draw just to keep things on standby, like the router. Um, we're not getting a lot in today, I don't think, because it's pretty rubbish out. 200 milliamps, that's the panel voltage, eight watts. Um, then going into the battery at the moment, it's only, Yes, like nothing basically. So, you know, we're taking out a lot more than we're using at the moment. But we'll see how long it runs for. It's 11.9 volts, you know, knocking up as the, as the voltage increases on the panels a bit. So at the moment, I can believe that that battery is what it says it is, 100 amp hours. Seems to be working pretty well um, for a lead acid battery. I'm starting off by just basically soldering the ends so that I can just lay them all out and then I can sort of link them up with these wires. I'm also checking the voltage of each one in the parallel bank so that when you parallel them together, you're not gonna have any nasty surprises, um, you know, with one discharging into another, but they should all be fairly the same. They should all actually be identical because they they were perfectly balanced in the pack. And they're only sitting at about 3.6 volts, I believe. So, you know, they're not, um, you know, they're not sitting there ready to, ready to ignite. 3.58, oh nearly 3.6. Well, this isn't good. What's happened to this one? Bank. Uh, it's, it's right, it's just the connections. 3.59. All right, so this joins some together. Right, guys, so I just noticed one of these cells getting warm when I linked it together. So that's obviously, that's a parallel bank and that's a parallel bank. Um, so just things to watch out for. You just gotta, it's definitely, definitely getting warm. Right guys, there we go. So, four banks of um, 1S, 9P, ready to go. So I just need to series these connections now. Just double checking there's no, I'm hoping that's just from the uh, the soldering iron. Not to waste any energy. So yeah, I don't know whether to keep, them, keep it in a flat format like this, and then I can add another one on top, and then another one on top of that. Or, um, yeah, I'll have to see. I think it's either that or you could stack them. You could always stack them like that. That's the kind of conventional way of doing it, isn't it? Just... Right, so I need to pop in now and do some other bits off camera. Um, but I'll come back in here later um, and maybe finish this off. I've also got some pretty cool bits and pieces turning up as well today, so I'll show you those later on. Right, guys, I'm back. A couple of bits have turned up and also I popped to the shops and I picked up a couple of things as well. So what's turned up? Well, I've got this. Um, so this is a Victron um, solar charge controller. This is a really cool bit of kit, guys. It's actually 
got Bluetooth so you can actually program this. But the reason for this is, as I was saying, I was trying out this other solar charge controller, but I think it's not really going to be suitable for the um, for the for the lithium ion pack because you can't really set the right voltage. But this, like you can program it by an app and you can basically set the exact voltage you want, the cutoffs, everything. So really good. And it also logs all the data as well, shows you how much energy you're getting in. And I mean, it's it's tiny. I'll get it out of the box because it, it looks so small. Here we go. It's got a nice big heat sink on the back of it. Yeah, it's not as small as you think. It's actually kind of more deep. It's a substantial bit of kit though. I like these um, terminal blocks and there's a some sort of protection tab in there. This thing here is the VE direct port, so you can actually plug this into other things like um, battery monitors, or there's an, I think there's a monitor that goes with this, which shows you all the all the stats and everything. But this is good. This will do the job because it's I mean it's a 20 amp controller. It's not um, it's not huge, but it handles the voltage range I need for this um, for this project anyway. So yeah, look liking this little earth thing there. Yeah, like the look of that. So I'm going to get this rigged up now. Um, ahead of time I might as well just you know get on and use this and then set it up with the app and I can show you all the um, all the bits and pieces of features with that if I can get it working. The other thing I picked up from my favourite shop Wilco's um, when we just popped out for lunch and uh, there's a Wilco's in the local town so I just popped picked up this. They come up with some brilliant stuff I've, I've only ever seen these like on Amazon or eBay. So this is a weatherproof box and it comes with an extension lead in it. Now the reason why I'm interested in this get that bit off the bottom is this is a really nice box um, and it's obviously weatherproof it has a flap like that and you can access this now I'm not really interested in the extension lead and all that so what I'm thinking I can use this for the battery so I can mount all these cells inside this box neatly um, and then you have basically got kind of a, a mini power wall to sort of set up and then what I'm going to do is use my Victron battery monitor mount that in there so that you end up with basically like a a kind of power wall with a voltage meter on the front of it showing you you know all the all the stats drawn drawn energy energy at the moment the temperature blah 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 all the stuff on there on this screen so how cool would that be so then i could actually get a few more of these boxes build more batteries or even maybe fit more more cells into this particular box and then i could have multiple mini power walls i'm quite liking this idea because it's also got some really nice exit points as well for wires. So I could have the output wires going in here and, and whatever else I need to um, need to connect up. So yeah, nice bit of kit. And it's got holes on the back as well, so you can actually just mount it really easily on the wall over there. That should be so good. Right guys, so I've got it mounted up here. Um, these terminals are quite small actually, so you know if you're going to use one of these, watch out, because I've got some quite beefy cables going in from the panel but it's all working and it's all powered up and this basically this blue lights flash flashing here i need to go and get my phone because i left my phone inside the house so i need to configure this right so i've got my phone just open the victron app and come straight up in the devices list so let's select that i'm gonna have to do this looking at it rather than uh smart solar would like to pair your phone in the code shown on the smart solar Where's that then? Looks like it might be this code on the side here. That's handy. I'll just put zero, 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 zero and it seemed to work. All right guys, at the moment, I can't seem to get anything other than uh, 116 watts shown on the screen. I'm using um, my Android phone at the moment because I just was using the iPhone and I swapped over to this one to see if it's any different. But we've got 116 watts. I mean, it's pitch black outside and there's no sun and it's saying we've got 9.4 amps. So this is something is clearly wrong with this i've tried um you know uninstalling i've tried to turn it off tried to turn it on cycling the power disconnecting everything putting it back again it's very very odd Let's shine a light on the panel and just see if anything happens this is a super bright light this one when it works there you go right looks like i might have sorted it guys i just shone the shone the torch on the um, top of the panel and then um, the voltage of the panel was going up um, and then it's just basically gone back down to zero now. So, so I think we might be in business, which is good. Good news. I was hoping there wasn't going to be anything wrong with it. Um, yeah. All right. So let's just just go up on the roof again. I'll show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. So we shine the light on the panel. So we're getting 9.7 volts off the panel. 
no current obviously this torch is this torch is super bright it actually creates a voltage on this panel now because this is bluetooth i'm not going to be able to pick this up in the house probably not um yeah definitely not um but there is a way of getting this online so you can actually see it but i'm still figuring that out that side of it out it's gonna it's, it's there's so much to this it's just it's just awesome really but what i'm gonna do because my battery voltage is a little bit um on the low side because i've been it's been on literally all day um with hardly any sun shining so we've taken quite a bit out of this battery so i'm gonna charge up using this charger here you know just put a little bit back into the battery so we can use this as a voltmeter here just to see what's going on with the battery i don't think there's any problem with doing this it should be fine so get that charging so we can see the voltage going up here 12 16 12 17 it's about a tenth off actually on on here it says 12.2 and on there it's saying 12.3 so yeah there you go it's probably it's probably my cheap chinese charger that's actually not very accurate so as i was saying before i mean there's loads of settings here you've got we'll go into these in detail when i set the other battery up but basically here's all the settings here so you can set 12 volts i've got factory default settings there which is just for normal lead acid um, and then all this but you've got this quite nice um display of well, if we go back out of here it's hard doing this beyond the camera You've got this history display here which shows you what you've brought in um you know per day which is kind of awesome so i'm going to reset that because there's nothing because all the figures are going to be skewed from my um last thing but yeah should be good to see what happens with this with this over time oh it's a clear chilly night tonight something weird's going on in here I don't think I think it's just a coincidence, but the um, the Dyson fan has stopped working now completely, just packed up. So it's pretty chilly in here at the minute. Remember the other day I was saying my power supply was playing up as well, but it seems to be all right now. I don't know what's um, what's going on there. Right, so I just thought I'd try something. I've got my um, Samsung Galaxy Note in its docking station, and um, it allows you to run like some of the apps on the desktop. Well, you can basically run any app that works on Android in a desktop environment, which is pretty cool. So if you go into here, you can see basically my my setup. So this is talking to that, the Victron charge controller directly. See a little blue light flash on there. So this is pretty good. So it means I'll be able to have this open on a screen if I want to. Um, I don't know if there's a way of having multiple apps or multiple screens, because when, when I wire up the other device, it, it will sh it'll appear here. So I'll be able to show like the voltage and all the statistics for the actual battery um, when it's when it's connected and rigged up in here on this um, on this panel as well. So it's quite good for sort of management. The only downside with this system right now is that you can't um, you can't use it you know over the internet. There is a way of doing it um, by connecting it out to a Raspberry Pi. Um, that's I've been looking into that. It's pretty straightforward actually, but. You need a Raspberry Pi 2 or a Raspberry Pi 3, um, which I haven't got, unfortunately. I've got lots of other Linux computers in here, um, including the ones that um, that we sell through Cloudstone, but it will just be a nightmare to port the software to that. I can't be bothered with that. So I'd probably just grab a Raspberry Pi because it's because the software's already been done. Anyway, I'm interested to see tomorrow what's going to happen. I think it's going to be quite a, quite a good day. Um, where's the weather on here? This is quite good. You can just type in what you want to find. So, weather underground. So tomorrow, so Tuesday, it's looking pretty good. It's clear, it looks like it's clear all night. And then, you know, a bit of sun eight, bit of sun nine, you know, 11 o'clock, we've got full sunshine. And it's pretty much sunny with a bit of cloud all day. So, so yeah, we should, we'll see what we can, what we can get in on the panels. This screen on, on the um, Smart Solar app, if you scroll back across to here, this shows you what your solar panel array is bringing in um, in sort of what hours and your, your maximum battery voltages, maximum minimum battery voltages and, and everything else. If you go to that screen, it then shows you each day as a bar. So once you get some sort of data behind you, then it will show a bar on each one of these. It's, it's blooming neat, really, really neat, this, this system. I really like it. That little niggle at the beginning, I don't know what that was about. It just must have been a little a little glitch when there's no voltage on the panel and you first rig it, rig it up. So if anyone comes across that, just, 
you know, if you're doing it in the dark, just wait, either wait until your panels have got some light on them or just go and do what I did and just shine a really blooming bright torch on them. Um, so yeah, voltage is hanging around about 12 volts now. The charger that I'm using to charge this battery just, you know, when, when there's no sun out, um, because I'm still using this inverter, this shed's been on all day, and I haven't, I've not switched onto, onto mains power at all. Um, so everything's been running off of off of that. The only thing I've got plugged in here is the um, is this charger to keep it separate from everything else. That's the plug for the Twizy, which isn't on at the moment. But but it looks like this, this screen's a bit bright. Um, but it looks like this has hit its limit of of ten thousand or ten amp hours. So so I think I'll just leave it at that for now. I don't want that sort of charging overnight. So because today was a pretty rubbish day in terms of sort of sunlight. Um, you know, you're going to struggle. We struggle to actually sort of pull in any power. So I think that's this is the problem. If you, you know, if you're running on one panel here, which is obviously, you know, it's probably not enough. But generally, this shed is kind of sitting here idle. So most of the time, it's just just on standby, kind of ready to go. Um, you know, and then I'm, and then I may come in here and do some work, do some stuff. So it's not like I'm in here permanently. And it's funny actually because the heater's packed up. I'm not using any external power um, at all. Like today, I didn't use any external power. I'm using the battery, and it's obviously depleting it because there wasn't enough sunshine to kind of, you know, top it back up again. I think at the moment, the way things are going, this system would just basically just keep this shed, you know, running. Um, you know, there's a few chargers and things and bits and pieces on, but it's, it's, under, it's under sort of 80 watts of power just sitting here all the time. So from, from the... From the inverter, from the battery, you're pulling less than two amps. So you know it's going to last, going to last ages, hopefully forever, because you know the power from the um, panel comes in. If I wanted to really, really make it foolproof, I could probably just add another panel. But in the summer months, I think you'll find that the current will just rock it. You know, with 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 even you know just two panels on there. So yeah, it's it's one of these sort of um, learning curve things. I think you know you can easily just go full out and go yeah right we'll just put like four panels on the top and calculate it properly. Um, but, you know, we're messing around here trying to work things out and just, you know, have, have a play about and, and test the gear that we're going to eventually offer on um, on Cloudstow there. So, yeah, it's looking good, it's really looking good. So that's about it for part two. Um, part three is going to be um, more messing around with these, getting these batteries into... I need to series connect these up and then insulate them and then figure out a way of kind of fixing them into here put them in this box um, I've already got like a this is from another project but this is actually from something else but I'm, I've not used it yet um, so we've got a whacking great 200 amp um, mega fuse on here probably a bit overkill but so we've got that there um, some power pole connectors I'm not sure what I'm going to use those for yet oh yeah also a BMS turned up today but it's only a um, it's only a 3S one hence why I've put it next to the uh, the three cells here. So I'm going to wire that up to that as something separate. But I've actually got a 4S BMS which is coming um, tomorrow. And then that'll allow me to stick the BMS onto here. The BMS is a 100 amp BMS as well. So that's perfectly fine for this. We're not going to be pulling more than that from here. Um, and then, yeah, does balancing. Everything else looks pretty good. You know, it's, the build quality looks fairly nice. You can see that one in there. It's the same one, but it's just a 4S version. Um, so, yeah. And then in here we'll have the shunt for this, which allows you to measure the current. So as I say, that will be mounted on, you know, on the other side of here. So yeah, guys, that's what's going to be happening um, in the next one. And um, yeah, see you in part three.